and welcome to this fibro section. Jazz hands, jazz hands, jazz hands. <laughs> so I'm doing this from the bedroom and this will be your last fibro section before Christmas and I thought it would be very apt to do a fibro section about fibro at Christmas because you know we're all going to struggle aren't we however delightful the season is it's always a struggle so let's crack on with all the tips and advice that I have researched for you fibro at Christmas and here is the trusty notepad <laughs> have you missed it <laughs> so Christmas is a magical time of year but for people with a chronic illness it can be exhausting painful and stressful and heighten all our symptoms can't it really you know the sheer volume of things to do to prepare for Christmas can make you stressed and want to hide away the best thing to do is start early and spread out the work so take breaks is the first piece of advice when living with chronic pain, it is important to take breaks and not put too much stress on your body. Yeah, it's, it's just important, isn't it, to pace yourself. Pace yourself in everyday life, but especially pacing yourself at Christmas. So, it says here, be as sociable as you want to be. During December, it can seem like party invitations are endless. Not for everyone, some people might not go out at all, but sometimes this, is, this can be how it feels. If you feel like you need to rest, you can always say no, or try to spread out the get togethers. So you have rest days in between, or rest weeks in between, um, and just be kind to yourself. But also remember that going out releases, it can release endorphins when we enjoy ourselves, which is the body's natural painkiller. So it's also good to do that. I know I struggle a lot when I go to choir because my body is saying, no, no, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. But then when I'm there and I'm singing and I'm enjoying myself with Ange and everything else, you know, it releases those endorphins that help to counteract the pain. Not always, not always. Sometimes like I have bad pain when I'm there, especially the seats, the seats are really hot. And last week when I was there, I had the most horrendous spasms in my body, but I would, I'd been having them all day and I thought they might go away with the endorphins, but they didn't. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just remember to be kind to yourself. Remember, you are not alone. Although living with fibro can feel very isolating at times, try to remember there are millions of people living with chronic pain, and this goes for ME too. Try to have some support. I use Twitter a lot, I've said that before, to talk to people who know how I'm feeling. So all the people that, well, I'd say the majority of the people that I have on Twitter that I follow are fellow fibro and ME sufferers so if I ever have a new symptom or something I want to ask I ask Twitter because there's going to be someone that knows the answer or that can help you don't be afraid to ask for help Christmas is all about family so don't be afraid of asking yours for help if you're struggling to get everything done for Christmas or you are suffering from a flare-up, see if your friends and family can ease the load for you. Now I know not everyone is lucky enough to have friends and family um, to support them, but if you do, definitely take them up on any offers. Um, if someone wants to post some Christmas cards for you, if someone wants to help you wrap some presents, or you know, you could make it a sociable gathering where someone comes round and you can have a glass of wine or a cup of tea and, and wrap some presents while you're chatting to your friends and before you know it, you've both done it, you know? Just accept whatever help you're offered. I'm particularly bad at that because a lot of the time I get offers from, for help during 
especially on Christmas Day. And I say, no, I'm fine, thank you. But I'm lucky because I do have Mark and I'll go into that later. Keep your pain medication handy. Whether it's a heat pad or support, make sure you have it all handy during the festive season. <laughs> you can just see Evie's ears. You can just about see Evie's ears. Eve has come to join us for the Christmas fibro section. Haven't you, Eve? Don't overdo the sugar. Treats seem to be everywhere you look at Christmas, but sugar can be a major cause of inflammation, so try and cut back as much as possible. I know that's easier said than done. I do, because I'm the world's worst for chocolate. <laughs> I am, and obviously like alcohol contains a lot of sugar as well, and at the festive season, you know, it's got to be done, but you know that you're going to probably pay the price for it. Plan well. If you leave all your shopping until Christmas Eve, it can be very stressful. Try to plan ahead. Order online and some companies, they do a wrapping service as well, so then you don't even have to wrap up, you know, it's all done for you, um, which is even handier, isn't it? Maintain your exercise. It can be tempting to let things slide at Christmas. But maintaining your exercise routine like yoga can help your joints moving and it eases fatigue and pain or even going for a short walk to see all the like the Christmas lights and things like that around your streets you know that it's so lovely I did that last year with the family and it was really really nice just to see all the Christmas lights distribute jobs trying to prioritize what needs doing and giving jobs out to be done can share the load. You can pay people now to decorate your home for Christmas, either using your own decorations or ones that they provide. So even if you feel like you know you can't do it but you want some festivity then and you you can afford to do it then you can pay people to do that. I saw someone advertise on um, a Facebook page saying that they had a business where they decorated people's homes for Christmas and I thought oh, I'd love to do that I don't think I'd be good enough but <laughs> I'd love to do it we always decorate together as a family um, we always start near the 1st of December which is a Wednesday this year so we're actually going to decorate at the end of November the, the, the last Saturday in November um, just so it's all up and ready for the 1st of December and yeah we i do it in stages and i do it with the girls and mark helps mark put all, puts all the outdoor lights up and then the girls help me do the tree and then i probably do all the other little bits and pieces like i'm going to do the christmas shelf of dreams if you've been watching my vlogs you will know all about the christmas shelf of dreams you know you've got to remember to stop before you're ready to stop which is a very hard thing to do so if you keep going until you're really tired you'll just crash and end up in a flare-up so it's good to do a little bit and then stop and have a rest do a little bit more stop and have a rest when it comes to people buying for you do you sometimes receive gifts that you can't use due to sensitivities like you know it might be to do with smell if people are giving you perfume or candles or things like that and you can't use them and you just think oh, it's just a waste of a gift because I can't use it or it's some it's like clothes that aren't soft to touch so you can't wear it why don't you do a list a gift list for your friends and family that you know will buy for you and just explain to them why you've done it. Just say, you know, I don't want you to waste your money on things that I can't personally use. Therefore, here is a list of things that I would really like um, that would be beneficial to me and my illness, you know? I think that's fair enough. If you do want to go Christmas shopping, like I am on Friday with Miss Angela, um, hire a shop mobility scooter. So that's what I've done. We're off to Lakeside in Thurrock and I phoned up and booked a shop mobility scooter for the day. I can't remember how much it is. It's around 20 pounds, I think, for the day. And um, yeah, you just 
whiz around on your shop mobility scooter. If you've got your own scooter, take that. Or if you've got a walker or a cane, but just remember if you're walking to really be careful because if you walk too much, then it can cause a, a flare too. So have regular brakes. And I know when you go Christmas shopping or shopping at any time, the lights in the shops and the people and the noise, and it's, it can be all too much. So remember, if you want to, to take some um, earplugs with you to cut out some of the noise, the background noise. Um, maybe take regular breaks somewhere where you can go in a, a quiet corner or something just to keep bringing yourself back. But I would recommend for the majority of your Christmas to do it online, which is what I tend to do. And then I go and just do the last few bits that I can't do online. You right, Eve? Are you enjoying this fibro section? <laughs> She's probably just wondering what I'm doing here because she usually just has the bed to herself during the day. So, the big day, Christmas day. Pace yourself with everything. If you are entertaining, then accept whatever help you are offered, which I don't do. <laughs> no, I have got help. Like I say, Mark always cooks the dinner and I chat with the guests. The girls usually do the drinks, so we have a good system going between us. Um, ask for help tidying up, or if you're offered it, take them up on it. Make sure you can sit on a comfy chair as well, because if you're sat on a hard dining chair, that's going to cause a flare up too, or, or really bad pain, like me at choir. Be careful not to overindulge, like we've said, with food and drink, because that can set off an IBS flare as well. And that's happened to me many a times over Christmas. And on Boxing Day, you will probably be feeling the effects from the day before. So take it easy and be kind to yourself. Take a warm bath or shower. You could use maybe some of the products that people have just bought you that you're able to use. And just have a, have a real quiet morning. We usually go to Mark's mum and dad's on Boxing Day. So then I can sit down in a comfy chair and let someone else take over you know so that's sort of my reward for christmas day no matter how careful you are symptoms can still knock you down and spoil your plans so be prepared for that right i've got no idea where i got to i had to stop because we just had the um a man in to clean the carpet so i think i was summing up my fibro section by saying like no matter how careful you are, symptoms can still knock you down, spoil your plans, and you need to be prepared for that. But also, enjoy yourself. <laughs> you know, Christmas is a lovely, lovely time of year. Well, I think it is. It's not lovely for everyone. And I will say that. I understand that it can bring bad memories or um, people aren't religious or they celebrate Christmas for other reasons it's all fine whatever you do is fine for you but for me I love Christmas it's one of my favorite times of year and I love all the family being together and we have friends over as well and I just I love it so I actually even enjoy the Christmas shopping <laughs> I know a lot of people don't but I really enjoy the Christmas shopping but anyway, I hope these little tips have helped you in some way. If you have a top tip for over Christmas, then comment down below and share it with all of us because, you know, I mean, what I will say as well is what Mark and I do is we do as much prep the day before, like Christmas Eve. So we get all the vegetables ready, all the potatoes, we even part boil the potatoes and then put them in the oven ready with the goose fat on, ready to be cooked the next day. So on Christmas day, all we've got to do is turn everything on and then dish it up. And we have a big food warmer that we put on the side in the kitchen and we put all the food in there and then people come in with their plates and they go and help themselves so they can get what food they want instead of us dishing it up. So that really helps. Um, but yeah, any, any tips that you have, um, comment down below because I'm sure we'll all be grateful to, um, to hear them. 
So don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not done already and hit that little bell. And I will see you all for a fibro section in the new year. Um, if there are any fibro sections you would like to see from me, obviously let me know. Um, otherwise I will just keep producing what I think will be beneficial to you. Love you all lots. Take care. Bye.